It's Comics Great Visual Storytelling Show, recorded live every other Wednesday at the Ann Arbor District Library in uh, down, lovely downtown Ann Arbor, Michigan, on the corner of 5th and William, uh, comics.aadl.org. And this is a show where we talk about comics, drawing, uh, creative lifestyle, um, anything to do with putting a pencil on paper and bringing your ideas to life. And I'm joined by two very special people today. And this is one of the rare privileges of doing this comics broadcasting stuff is uh, I'm going to start with, with the big name first. Uh, you got Mr. Mark Kistler on the Lee. show. Uh, Lee, four, hours, four hour drive oh my gosh so yeah lee drove four hours to be our in-studio guest today and uh, what a gracious guy you are mark for passing it <laughs> off to lee <laughs> four hours wait this is lee he thought he was late today he was coming i gotta get on the radio interview <laughs> 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 that man is mark kistler of draw3d.com and some other exciting projects we're going to talk about in a little bit here but uh lee i want to say something real quick you drove four hours to be here uh back in the days when i used to work on the art and story podcast we had this thing called like the listeners were the art and storyers and we had like one guy who like contributed a lot to the show and he was art and storyer number one i don't know what the comics are great listeners are called yet uh, and, and I hesitate to even call them anything, but if there was a name, you'd be number one because yeah, oh. you, you get the record for most dedication to, I mean, in, in terms of like the, the help you've given the show, like advocating for it, promoting it, and then also coming all the way out here to, to be on the show today. That's super awesome of you. Thank you so much, Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> So, yes, littleguardianscomic.com, which we'll talk about in a minute, but I want to introduce this man over here, Mr. Mark Kistler. Uh, wait, 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 littleguardians.com. I'm taking, I gotta, I gotta littleguardianscomic.com. Comic, comic.com. Okay, that helps. Great. <laughs> So yes, Lee and I are both. Uh, I mean, we this this whole episode came about because I, we were just talking about you, Mark, uh, on Twitter. Mm -hmm. I, I don't remember what wh how that came up. Oh, I think you did. yeah, I, I brought up. I was talking to a young student of mine because I teach comics classes in the Ann Arbor area, and I, I don't remember what happened, but I was talking with a kid, and some kind of really nice thing came out of it, and I said I kind of felt like Mark Kissler for a moment there, <laughs> and then and then Lee and I started talking about like, oh God, he's so awesome, and I love this about a show, I love that about a show, and like the, the sense of sincerity, enthusiasm, and earnest. Uh, and then uh, I, I just kind of said, yeah, I should see if I'll get him on the show. And, and Lee direct messages Enthusiastic me. Enthusiastically agree. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's awesome. <laughs> it's, yeah, Lee direct messages me. He's like, in all capital letters, oh God, if this happens, let me know. I will so be there. <laughs> and here we are a couple months later. So um, It came true. <laughs> oh, wow. Thank you, guys. It's a total honor and privilege to be here. It's great. I'm, uh, I'm myself in Kalamazoo. I'm... Uh, what three hours from you here? I'm doing classes, uh, doing spring art class, still still teaching after 35 years. My favorite thing to do is inspiring the next generation. I love teaching, but it's it's, uh, it's just like plugging into the you know 500,000 volt battery. These kids are so enthusiastic. They love to draw. Oh, they have such a passion for art. So. That is that is something that I'm finding too in my teaching work is that when you get in a room full of fifth graders, it's like try to keep the pencil out of their hands, right? Right, right. Then something happens when a lot of people, to a lot of people, when they grow up. And I did, I I also teach classes for adults sometimes, and uh, you know, it's like when I start the, the class starts out and the grown ups like, oh, you draw comics? That sounds like such a cute little fun thing that you do. And I'm like, all right, well, we're gonna draw together. And like, oh no. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, that, that's scary. I don't want to put ideas on paper because then that's permanent. That's eternal. And that scares me. Uh, I don't know what it is that happens to us. Uh, or a lot of adults, you know, not, not us, well, not us, <laughs> not, not us. Uh, the guys in this room, but, but something that's unfortunate that that can happen sometimes to people. But I'm, I'm glad that you're there to do what you do because Lee and I are both in the fields that we are. In, in no small part because of your work. I don't want to be too effusive about this, but, but, but you know, one of the things that we talked about on Twitter was that you had a profound impact on, on our career paths. Mm -hmm. yep. So, uh, Thank you so much. I, I just, I'm, I'm trying to remember that word effusive so I can use it twice today. That's a good word. <laughs> yeah. You gotta, gotta keep learning new words, man. Effusive, wow. Uh, That's <laughs> a big word. But thank you very much. And yeah, well, that was the, the, the I just love I love to draw, and I love passing that that inspiration and passion on to the parents and kids. You're right; the kid, the parents are 
are very hesitant to draw. But what I do when they're, uh, I, I, I make them come and stay for the first day for my workshops and, and they actually have to draw and they want to sit there on their iPhones and do the email or they, you know, texting or they want to do the laptops and I put everything away. They have to put everything away. And they just draw with try it for 20 minutes. And if you can get a parent to sit for 15 minutes, turn everything off, put the books down and newspapers and everything down and just just try it. Just put the pencil to the paper and try it. See that eye in the background? I put that up. That's from my my new book. I, I wrote a book just for just for that reason, just to try to get the parents to uh and I, of course, good planning. I don't have it here to hold. It's called You Can Draw in 30 Days. And it's um I have every parent that sits on the First day, draw that on the screen, that human eye, and they all do it in ten minutes, and so it's, it's in the book, and it's a neat icebreaker to to remind them that they love they, they like to draw. Everybody, it's a it's a core communication skill from when we were in cribs and eating baby food. We all love to draw in, in the high chair. We we love to draw on the floor and the air and the sand and the suds in the bathtub, and we 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 get a lose that, but it is it's the most primal form of uh, communication, visual communication of what we're thinking, what we're feeling, what's in our imagination, what we see in the world around us. And just reminding the adults that they can draw is a huge step. And it unlocks a whole world of possibilities for them. They go, oh my gosh, that's right. I, I love to draw. Yeah. So yeah, that that is that is the trick is is reminding them that that, that it is a fun activity. Limit d- diminishing that risk, right, is like a big deal with when in teaching adults art. Uh, right, taking and, that step, I, I call it creative risk taking. You gotta you gotta be able to to step out of your comfort zone and draw. Just put the line onto paper, and I I'll have the audience. Uh, toss up items that I that I haven't practiced drawing myself for a long time for you know a, a giraffe or, or something or you know a, a, a so what was the, I was with a group of eighth graders in New York two weeks ago and they wanted me to draw a one of the elves from the Hobbit and I drew it and it turned out looking like a professional wrestler <laughs> and, I thought, and, and I thought it was a great learning uh, moment of look at I've been drawing for 35 years this is what I do for my career and I still have to practice. It's like the the people in the symphony, the Philharmonic, or the uh, I, I just did saw these guys perform Circa de uh, la Symphonie, these these incredible trapeze and balancing guys, and and they've been doing this for thirty. They have to practice every day, or they'll fall and die. You know, <laughs> yeah. the symphony guys have to practice every day with their bassoons and violins, and and same with the same with art. You still have to practice in order to to nail the picture. But you can't be afraid to push out of your comfort zone, take the creative risk, try something new, and it doesn't have to be perfect. No one has to see it. You can you can just close your sketchbook and do, or go to another page. It doesn't have to be perfect at all. Just relax, let the ideas flow, and enjoy the process. This is a joy. It's a joyful experience. Man, I, I want to go there and talk about this joy because this is something. Okay, so Lee and I, I think both our entry points to Mark's career was uh, the Secret City. Yes. Yes. Remember the or, Secret City? Oh my goodness! That's you <laughs> I can was see. In the uh, I look club, exactly yeah. the same. It's incredible. <laughs> oh my gosh! So wait, 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 you were in the draw squad <laughs> crowd? Oh yeah, card carrying yeah. member. So yeah, we have a card carrying member of the draw squad here too, on mm-hmm. top of everything else. <laughs> You see the book way back there on that, the Draw Squad mm-hmm. book. I had that book. <laughs> <laughs> you have that one. Oh, that's awesome. But I continued to yeah, watch. 1985. Yep. I continued to watch your shows into my adulthood. Uh, you know the the uh, Imagination Station. You know, years later, I'm still watching the show. And thank you. Uh, thank you. You're the well, you're one of the sixteen. <laughs> now we can sixteen viewers still right on. <laughs> Uh, is, the moment I say those two words together, the theme song gets stuck in my head. You know, it's like just the, that 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 uh, guitar, that dunk 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 dunk. Uh, but but you know, the the thing that really attracted me to your shows from the start was this sense of well, this effusiveness, this joy, this this I'm so excited to be here. I mean, the 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 Secret City kicks off. Where you're like, are you excited? You know, are you ready to do this thing? Um, I actually watched a uh, a YouTube. One of the viewers, I'm not sure who or where, put up. I was going to pull up the theme song from the Secret City. Maybe you could do that on YouTube with your viewers. But you type in the Secret City on YouTube, and you can see a whole bunch of these episodes. And it's uh, was I ever that young? Goodness gracious! So I was nineteen twenty when I did the show, and uh, the guy who was on the phone, my producer Robert Newstad, he produced uh, 
and co-directed my new series last year. You talked to Robert, right? Yeah, yeah. We sure and uh, he's in Chicago, and I'm in Houston, and our animators are Ward in, in uh, uh, Boston, and the, the whole crew at ITT Tech did all the editing and everything at ITT Tech, a bunch of students at uh, in, um, uh, North Los Angeles, and then Atlanta School of Design did the animation for us, the School of Animation. A uh, whole team effort, a bunch of volunteer effort. We won the Emmy. Is that awesome? That is pretty cool. Congratulations That's, on that. And I keep talking about it. it's 2010, and I said, "Oh, I won the Emmy!" Like it was yesterday. But it was two years ago, but um, you know, it's it's sitting up on the shelf in my daughter's room with all her Barbie dolls. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. You know the uh, the scene in ET where he's in the closet with all the stuffed animals. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's what my my Emmy's up there's all these Barbies looking out and I go oh ah oh, there it is <laughs> it's so funny now there um the point is that we were we started back in 1985 and we we just Robert uh, still is with me after 30 years he's in, uh, still producing the series this, the Imagination Station he was there at the Maryland Public Television when we produced it back in uh, when I was what 20 so it's been a long long uh, fun joyful but a lot of hard work you know you have to you have to find what you love to do and grab onto it with the passion the passion the belief that you're going to make you're going to make your dreams come true and i always wanted to go around the world teaching kids how to draw that's all i've ever wanted to do is uh draw and share it with the with kids and with families and my goodness i've been able to go to 14 countries and Teach people all over how to draw marshmallow. <laughs> marshmallows and screaming hippopotamuses and stuff. I mean, is this a great country or what? Huh? <laughs> uh, you had something that you had pulled up about him winning the Emmy, oh, right? Yeah, yeah. I had um, uh, the Sci Fair magazine article. With, so, uh, so Sci Fair magazine. Oh, oh, wow. Okay, so yeah, Mark mm-hmm. Kissler draws an imagination. Uh, d- you, can you give, give me a link later on to put in the show sure. notes? Because it's sure. like a whole Absolutely. article written about mm-hmm. Mark. Well, yeah, it's, on, uh, it's on my website. Go to my website. You click oh. on. Okay. I, 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 um, of course, it's a picture of me in the media. I put it right on my website, of course. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Oh, let me modestly put everything that has a picture of me right here. Just push the button. You go to go to the e-press kit and you can see the article. It's a good article. It's a great article. And, and hopefully you can tell that uh, I uh, – um, been on the, this this quest trying to i've been an example for for you guys it's great to hear that you got inspired got into your cartooning and graphic art comics uh and but the the, the side uh, oh it, it would it, well I, I, during the travels of, of being on the road for 35 years it's, it's been a really amazing you know global tour but i've gained a lot of weight and it's been done a very public way and i get Lots of emails about it, you know, some of them concerned, oh, no, you know, do you want you to die? And then some just really uh, harsh, mean emails. So uh, mm. uh, thank you for the emails, but try to keep it kind of friendly, friendly, positive. <laughs> Don't be mean. <laughs> and, uh, but I, it's it's motivated me to be start a new quest here that I'm approaching 50 years on this planet. And my goal is to, to as I tour this next year through 100 cities, 100 cities I have on my schedule, about 132, and uh, I'm going to lose 100 pounds in one year. And I'm at week number 10, and I've lost 31 pounds. Give me five. Give me five. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and it's uh, I want to uh, show you guys and the kids, and it is possible to, in our time and our where our culture is with billboards of filet of fish sandwiches, 15 filet of fishes for a buck. Um, how you can make smart choices on the road and and just walk, get out there, enjoy the the world around you, and be healthy. So, uh, I have the website is uh, uh, one hundred pounds one hundred cities dot com. Um, yeah, Check and it. it's pounds spelled p o p spelled out p o u n d s one hundred pounds one hundred cities dot com. And there's a YouTube channel. You've been doing a lot Great. of video blogging. Uh, on your on your YouTube channel too. See, it's, he gets the technology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you've been posting videos like crazy over the last couple <laughs> thank weeks. Thank you, thank you, Jody Ryan, my amazing literary agent. She's awesome. I I don't know how to do it. She's she's been trying to teach me, and I and we're we're gonna meet tonight for two hours, and uh, just trying to figure out how to tweet and 
Facebook and Google Plus and I mean, these guys are insane. <laughs> well, no, th- there is a lot to keep up on in in regards to that, and it and it does get taxing. I mean, even for us kids, uh, it it gets really uh, you get a lot of uh, what is it, social media uh, burnout, burnout, yeah, yeah, from having to like. Was, I did you, a you thing. I got a pu- letter. You, that that letter you sent me. I asked you, hey, I can't understand all this. Help me out. And you took the time and you wrote, and it was about you. What you were saying is that you you do you spend of time with your questions giving a lot of personal time and attention i think that's very applaudable thank you oh no no are you kidding i'm just paying it back for all the stuff that you did for us uh but but you uh you, we should say that you're at Mark underscore Kissler on Twitter too, and people should go follow him today. When I saw that you, you're new to Twitter. Oh, oh, should I? I haven't Twittered. Okay, I'm going to do a Twitter here right now. No, how do I do it? <laughs> anyway, I push Twitter. Yeah. Okay, okay, so I say I'm on with Jersey Drod, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just uh, at comicsagreat.tv. Yeah, what if I push to send a, a tweet? Just a little letter thing. Yeah, yeah. Hey, there we go. Okay, cool. <laughs> If I go, hi, I'm on with Jersey. Will everybody get that? Oh yeah, oh yeah. And right. people are people are uh, talking about it right now. Uh, yeah. Should I get, uh, with with. Okay. Uh, well, hey, I have thick fingers for my little iPhone. Okay. Uh, this is a good use of broadcast time, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Learning how to do Twitter. Okay. Now wait. I'm on. I'm with Jersey. And then do I put at at then J E R Z Y. Okay. At. Everybody do this at once. You guys, you guys are watching. Let's all do it together. Let's all like send Jersey a note. Let's go. Okay, our, our, our at Jersey. That was, that's it. At Jersey. Yeah, and then and then just comics are great. TV. Uh, just type okay. that. In. Tweet. Go. And there we go. Tell, tell me if you got it. All right, I'm checking now. And the eight-year-old me is freaking out, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> you got to explain it to me. I don't get it. I want to. I really, really want to get it. So, but so what's the point of the tweet? I don't. Okay. Understand. So, so the the point of the tweet is is it's a way for you to have public discourse where people can message you and you don't have you don't have to respond to them if you don't want to, but if 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 uh, some if a polite constituency at tweets you and says, hey, you know, uh, like at Mark underscore Kistler, I'm wondering about this funny word called foreshortening. And you only have 148 characters to respond. So this is an opportunity for you. Like, So I sent you that email response, and you thanked me for it, and that was very kind of you. But this is a way for you to send short responses, and the audience understands that you don't have a lot of space to send a long response. So you just send a quick response. Foreshortening is a, a, a circle that's squished to give a, a, a sense of, of... I was waiting for you to come up with that. that was good. <laughs> I was testing you, teacher. Good, good. See, you're down there. That's you. I'm pointing to you. And there's, there's cool... Wait, Lee! Lee's right there. My note. There's Lee. <laughs> oh, you know what I just discovered? Look, I can move... I can move my... I'm in the middle of you guys now. Oh, no, it bounce back. <laughs> But but yeah, so it's 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 like it's like public email in a way, and it's also a way for you to let it's it's like a public newsletter too. So you can use it both as a bullhorn to say, "Hey, I'm doing a thing," or "I did a thing." Look at the thing I did. Or it can be a way for you to discuss with people. So sometimes we get into conversations. Like for instance, you can use a hashtag, you know, the pound sign with like a certain word behind it. And Lee, you get involved in this one. There's a oh, hashtag. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, long form comics. Oh, long form web comics. Actually, uh, it's so it's pound sign L F W C. And you, WC, okay. And there. then and then you just put that in your posts, and then people can do a search for that tag to follow a discussion thread. So it can be both a newsletter and it can be a instant messaging service, and it can just be a way for you to just uh, you know uh, meet people that you don't know online. You follow some different people and follow dis- the discussions. And I, I, I've said this a million times on the show, but uh, I think it's really uh, worth repeating. Uh, there's a guy on Twitter. His his, his handle is one Tim Street. The number one. Tim Street. And he once said that uh, Twitter is a cocktail party. And when you're at a cocktail party, you don't go around and push your business card in everybody's faces. You listen to the conversations. If you have something to contribute, you chime in. And uh, and, and that's how that's how you meet people and network with people and, and is through just genuine conversation. And really, who is more genuine than Mark Kistler, for sure? I, I mean, this, tell you. Oh, this, this, sure. this is a guy who will swim oh, in these waters. Go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. I have this with my kids because sometimes in the afternoon they don't laugh at my jokes. So have... <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
But that's really all it is. It's just it's just talking in public with people and uh, just just list, you know when some you have something to contribute to a conversation, you jump in and then and you also just use it as a broadcasting mechanism to let people know about what you're doing. So now I hope everybody listening to this even now during the live stream and after the fact will go to twitter.com slash mark underscore Kistler and follow him because this guy's got a lot of interesting stuff to share, both in terms of drawing and then also the 100 pounds, 100 cities uh, effort that you're putting out. Uh, lots yeah, that's good. Look, I'm getting a little, I kept a little tweets here for people. Cool. <laughs> wow, Super, that's awesome. That's cool. Super cool. Now, when we talk about genuine, uh, being genuine, because I don't know how much longer we have you, because I know you have another workshop to run off to. Because this man, we're is good. Always... We're good. Okay. Uh, one of the things I got we're... the door closed, and I can see him out there. <laughs> <laughs> All the kids are screaming at the door. Listen, yeah, listen. twenty minutes. Go play. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> oh man, that's awesome. Uh, but one of the things that Lee and I were talking about before we got you on the Skype was that. This is a guy who can walk into the room in a like a sort of like a flight jumpsuit, call himself Commander Mark, say pencils in your head, get ready, art attack, and it doesn't feel forced. It doesn't feel contrived. This felt like it was coming from a real place inside of you. Very infectious excitement. Yes, yes, very much so. I mean, who didn't get excited when it was time for an art attack, right? Oh, yeah. For yeah. sure. Remember, oh, memory lane, memory lane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I still love, I still love dry. I still sing and do all that, but I haven't done the pencil. I got to do that. I forget it. So, you know, you change as you go for the years sure. and different things and antics and that's fun. That's a fun one, pencil power. That's from 1990s, <laughs> yeah. Um, it's just because, you know, I'm like you guys. I got, you know, seven, eight-year-old enthusiasm in my heart. <laughs> I, I love I love the kids. I love the parents, and I love what I do. And I'm just so lucky I get to do this for a living. And you know, this, this is how I pay my mortgage and feed my children. I mean, what a what a lucky, lucky guy, huh? Mm -hmm. But where I want to go with this is, is that the funny thing, this is why I said that you'll just swim in the waters of Twitter, is because... At the age of 20, and I can't believe you were that young when you started The Secret City. That blows my mind that you were so well-spoken and articulate at that age. When I was 20, I was doing the whole looking at my shoes going, oh, no, oh, oh, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I was that guy. That's funny. Uh, it, it was the 90s, and Kurt Cobain was really big, and it was really uh, awesome to, to mumble and have your hair in your face. Uh, but um, So here we are. It's the 21st century, and I did a talk, actually, at Ignite Chelsea, and it's on YouTube. People can find it if they want to, and I, I, it was called, I did a talk called The 21st Century Cartoonist, and I highlighted what I saw are the... See, I'm taking notes. <laughs> 21st Century Cartoonist. Write that down, everybody. We're gonna... <laughs> It'll okay, be in the show things. notes. You gotta, you gotta listen to the show with no paper and pen in your hand. This is good. This info. is a vocab moment. That's another thing I picked up from you. Actually, I do that in my classrooms all the time. When I find an interesting word, I write it on the board, and we. Oh, right it. away, right away. Kids pop, and they're just ideas, and you gotta wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Write them down. For sure. So I'm sorry. Go ahead. Tell me. Oh more no. About so. That. Oh look, there's a car going by. <laughs> <laughs> But one of the things I highlighted in that talk is I said, like, it's not enough for us to just create. We also have to be spokespeople for our own projects because with social media, uh, it, the audience expects that we're going to either blog or podcast or photo blog. There's going to be some extra content to go along with the content we make. Like, for instance, with the 100 Pounds, 100 Cities thing that you're doing, Mark, you've got a video blog that's going on with this where you're posting little updates from the field. And this is, you know, not the main feed, but it's it's supplemental feed. But it's you have to put yourself out there. Here you were 20 years old you put yourself out there you found your voice you found your persona uh, which i mean i'm sure you know you are not commander mark all the time right uh but 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 i'm sure to, that to my kids utter dismay <laughs> uh, I don't know, have Dad, you you're freaking out <laughs> have you seen his birth certificate it does start with commander does it really <laughs> uh but but well, i had peanut butter when i was a kid but yeah it, well i was um I've always been a, a, a dreamer, a goal, goal chaser, and I didn't want to just be a dreamer and not, not have anything tangible in my life to show. You know, I was, uh, I was raised uh, with my parents who were uh, very much goal-oriented people, and uh, the the idea that anything that you can imagine and believe that you can achieve—it's amazing the power of your imagination. It's the most amazing tool, right here, right, right here. And I've always uh, believed that and tried to impart that with my students and my kids that you can achieve anything you can dream in your life. It's just the world, the world's out there. The world's your oyster. And <clears throat> when I was 15, I actually started the goal. I wanted to teach 
a, a million children. Well, I read a book by Napoleon Hill. It's called Think and Grow Rich. It's still a great, great book. It's written back in 1940s or 50s. And it talks, he talks all about the obsession, you know, making, making the money, making the money. Well, I figured that I really wanted to, I figured the money would come if you do what you love to do. And that's proven to be right. I mean, if you do what you love to do with great passion, zeal, and it, uh, with enthusiasm, and I'm trying to get effusive in there, but I don't know how to tie that new word in, <laughs> but it's out there. I'm thinking about it. And if you do what you, you love to do, you're, the, the money's going to be there. You got to, you got to find something you love to do that you're passionate about with just this, this, you do it for free, which I do, <clears throat> you know, if I get paid, it's, that's great. But even if I don't, I'm still every day, I'm still drawing and still out in the public. So I, I, uh, when I was 15, I made the goal of teaching a million kids how to draw. Uh, by the time I was 18 and I missed the goal, I was going to schools and I had only taught 400,000 kids when I was 18. Oh, oh my only. It was, I know now I look back and I go, God, that's, that's, that was pretty good. But back then, <laughs> oh, was, oh my gosh. All right. 21. Oh, well, maybe give me three more years. Uh, well, uh, on the, it, when I was uh, 20 is when I uh, hooked up with the television folks. I saw this company had little how to uh, paint videos available in the art store. They didn't have anything on children or drawing. I go, oh, Dick should have drawing videos. So I, uh, uh, this is FedEx had just came out. So I FedExed the company of the the uh, video. Oh, you need to get drawing videos. And I went out, I had rent, went out and rented a video camera. Black. This is when they were black and white, and video cameras were cutting edge. This is back in. <laughs> 1983, yeah, when you know they the were huge. video cameras, a huge thing. You had to have <laughs> it plugged into a recording box too, didn't you? And I you? taped paper to the wall in my apartment and put up the video and didn't. I was just my hand. I did a how to draw video, 20 minutes, and I Federal Expressed out the videotape, and the guys uh, didn't hear from, so I kept calling them every day. And it turned out that they were producing a children's show and they were looking for a host for the children's show. And, but they had already found somebody in England, some some guy who was a great uh, children's painter. And I go, no, 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 no. You need me, me. And <laughs> so I, I was just crazy with FedEx and calling him everything. But it was the, the power of the dream and the passion. It, it gave me enough. Just, and plus youth. You have this blind confidence. You can do everything, which is wonderful because I was – and they take, you know eventually chose me to do the show – and a sorry about that guy in England. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry that you got bumped off the show. Sorry about that. He's, uh, he's the guy who's actually that, sending that, you the emails. The path. And I got the show. When we broadcast the show. It went out September 1985. And it was I, my birthday was August. So I missed it again, the goal. I had got to about – and I kept the chart on the wall, you know. And it's, I was at 400,000 kids. And every school you go to is five or 600,000. Well, my birthday was in August and September. The show brought we were on. I, must, I think it was estimated to about eleven or twelve million kids saw it. So that was, I gave myself that, you know, yeah, to that month, you know. So we got to millions of kids. It was a wonderful series. You remember that the spacesuit, you know? Oh yeah, and the 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 drawing wall, the mural that you did all the time. Oh my mm -hmm. gosh! I mean, that's. Isn't that that was the part that whenever I talk to people who remember that show, that's the part that we all go, oh, remember the wall? Remember the wall? When he'd go to the wall at the end, that was like, and all of us wanted that wall. And I had one friend whose dad was so cool because he was a huge fan of your show. And he said, dad, can I do my bedroom like Commander Mark's wall? And he's like, sure you can. And this kid, his whole bedroom walls were, were just, you know, popular with cities and spaceships. And yeah, the little flying saucer with the guy who wants pizza. And, that's cool. I, to remember. <laughs> you made me cackle. You, know, you made me effusively cackle. Hey, uh, he got it. My uh, my, uh, my mom uh, in fifth grade. She let my brother and I draw on a wall. That's where the secret symbol came from. Is my mom. Oh wow. And, and we we drew the mural and. Uh, there's a I, I took a little the you know modern video camera, a little tiny one, a couple of years ago, and it's hanging up in my brother's classroom in uh, Carlsbad, California. He teaches at Carlsbad High School. Uh, don't just pop in. <laughs> but you should, if you want to see it, it's pretty cool. Uh, but it's it's uh, in Carlsbad, and I did a video of it, and I, we put it online. It's out the it's out YouTube. You type in the Secret City mural. It, it, take yep. a little walk down memory lane. It's so wonderful. It just I look back at that and I think, oh my goodness, I I drew pretty good stalactites when I was twenty years old. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we've got some of that video. We got some of that video queued up. If Matt, you want to play some of that video while we talk about the Secret City mural, uh, yeah, here we go. We got it on screen. The, you can't see it right now, Mark, but the the viewers can. So, oh, cool. Yeah, that is uh, 
just a, uh, we did every day we did worked on it for eight minutes. And uh, what's a little funny uh, story is after the first 20 episodes, uh, I had to start the mural all over again. They, we, the mural was on too light of a background. And so they had to repaint it with a dark. And I was so I, one day I was there and we were, I already had the third of the mural done because we're 65 shows in the series. We're a third of the way into it. And they had to have had to repaint the whole thing because it wasn't cutting the, uh, it wasn't broadcasting. Clear. Oh, and, uh, wow. You know, uh, wow. So taking pictures of it. So I had to redraw the whole mural. <laughs> that was, uh, so that mural is mur- mural version two, actually. Two, two. <laughs> the first one's lost to the ages. Oh. Yeah, the first one's layered. It's underneath there, you know. Oh, so it's like a palimpsest. It's There's another there. vocab moment. We could, yeah, like we can we, x-ray the mural later <laughs> and see the underpainting. It's Go like the, the, the Da Vinci Code. We're going <laughs> to pull off some of the layers and find out the real secrets. I, I just couldn't believe it. I, uh, Michael Steyer, the uh, station director way back at, at Maryland Public Television, and if anybody from MPT is watching, great memories from 1985. What a great summer. That's where I met my uh, my best friend, uh, Robert Newstad, and uh, still working with me in Chicago. Um, I was expecting him to text in here, but he hasn't yet. Uh, but he uh, he and Michael uh, got the, them to ship the mural out to me in California. So they they I had returned from doing the series, 1985. Went back and I was uh, I wasn't expecting it. And all of a sudden, this huge crate looked like this giant coffin, but huge. You know, the mural was uh, must have been what 12 feet long or longer. <laughs> Wow. And they had shipped this 200-pound uh, wood crate out to my house, and I got the mural. And so it's been out there ever since. Now i got to figure a way to get it from there to where I live in Houston now. Wow. Oh, well, how come it's not going to the Smithsonian? That's where I would want it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, for sure. Uh, they got Julia Child's kitchen, just... for crying out loud. All right, cool. Perfect. So, Lee, I do. the floor is yours. Okay. Um, favorite memory or experience you had teaching, like either uh, something a kid said to you or your Hmm? Are they here? Oh, oh no, no, we're we're okay. Yeah, yeah. I just got a oh, little okay. message from my producer. We're all, we're all right. <laughs> oh, good. Um, like either. Oh, we're down to like five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> we're down to like the last fifteen. Uh, but you can okay, go I, whenever I, you I, need I, to. I got all right, all right. I got a great story. That's a good question. Um, if, uh, about fifteen years ago, I was teaching through Australia. The Australian Public Television was carrying my show, and uh, the airline, Ensign Airlines, was sponsoring the show. So I got to fly all of, this is before 9-11, before our world changed. And um, that's been, this is when traveling was enjoyable. Um, <laughs> we, uh, uh, the, I got to sit in the cockpit with the pilots because Anza Airlines was sponsoring. So I, I got to fly between all these cities and sitting in the cockpit and the pilots were all cool. And uh, we, we, uh, one of the cities I visited was uh, in Sydney, the Sea World. I was just telling the story to my kids today up here, my up on the overhead projector back here. I still love old school. You know, everybody wants document cameras now, and <laughs> you know, give me an overhead. I just want to want to be able to see the kids and draw. So I'm drawing a dolphin up here, and it reminded me of a story. I was teaching the kids, five thousand kids in the arena in Sydney, Australia. Through the dolphin, I got to jump in the tank behind the lagoon. I had a SeaWorld wetsuit on and everything. I jumped in and got to grab onto the mother dolphin's uh, dorsal fin and right around the lagoon. And the, and the, uh, the uh, trainers had, I remember him saying, Hey, Yankee, they call me Yankee, you know, Yankee Doodle, I'm an American. Hey, Yankee, and I can't do the accent. Yankee, <laughs> don't make any noise. You're going to scare. Just jump in quietly. <laughs> I mean, come on, 5,000 <laughs> kids. So I jump in the water, grab the dorsal fin, and go, yeah! <laughs> and the, the, the dolphin took off like a bat out of, ca- out of a cave. <laughs> wow. And I'm going 90 miles an hour. Wah! And I was only supposed to do one loop around the lagoon and get off and wave to the kids. Well, I, I wasn't going to let go. She was going 90 miles an hour. Yeah! Well, then he said, be careful because all the teenage dolphins are going to get jealous and they're going to come up and they're going to start trying to hit you with their their noses, right? Well, I'm going, holding on to mama dolphin, kids, 5,000 kids now screaming. So they think it's all (laughs) part of the show. I'm scared for my life. Ah! Screaming. So I'm screaming. She's going faster. Then the teenage dolphins start coming up and butting me. Well, you know the story that 
dolphins are such sweet, kind, lovable, compassionate creatures. Yeah, they beat the crud out of me, man. <laughs> yeah, they, you talk to those group of dolphins, how sweet and fluffy they are. Man, I get out. Ah, oh, feel like someone had. Uh, 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 well, that's the story. That <laughs> that's the story. I got I got beaten up by dolphins. Wow. In now, front of 5,000 kids drawing, yeah. The life now, of teaching kids how to draw, fun. yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, well, that, that's the thing. I want to go back in time. I want to get that flux capacitor and go back to 15-year-old Mark Kissler who says, I'm going to teach a million kids. So, yeah, you know what that's going to get you? You're going to get beat up by dolphins. Yeah, <laughs> you're going to get beat up by these wonderful, smart, soft, compassionate creatures. Oh, sweet. <laughs> so that was the Australia story. But I've, I've had just a remarkable journey, and I, uh, and I can't wait for, you know, the next – years, but I've been able to go to uh, uh, just about every continent and uh, teach kids how to draw from, you know, you know, all, from, you know, dinosaurs to ocean creatures to space aliens. And uh, it, it never, it constantly uh, gives me a source of uh, enthusiasm and uh, passion and also compassion because there's a lot of people out there who, who really need to be reminded of hope and joy, especially in this time. Oh yeah, you get no argument from me. Uh, man, you just you just loaded us with a boatload of really great food for thought, mm. uh, and and delivered delivered as only Mark Kissler can deliver it, right? <laughs> uh, I I'm I'm, I'm going to ask my producer Matt, are we getting uh, Eli in here or are we okay? All right, we're ready whenever you are, Eli, for do some book recommendation segment. Uh, and, of course, we're going to recommend uh, You Can Draw in 30 Days as being one of our top recommendations for the list today. Um, Lee, I wonder if you wanted to show some of your work on the oh, on the overhead okay. cam. Because uh, another book recommendation we can make is littleguardianscomic.com. You do a comic called Little Guardians. Mm -hmm. I have, uh, I'm actually in the process of putting together, I'm actually in the process of putting together the first book. Um, so I didn't have the book itself, but like I have my little uh, promo business cards, uh, and uh, I have some printed off pages <laughs> with me here today. So let me grab those. It's a web comic, yeah. but it will soon be a print comic. Yeah, soon be a print comic. Can you, I, can you, can you hold it so I can yeah, see it? I'll, I'll mm -hmm. hold up some for for Mark to see, mm -hmm. and I don't know if you can see this okay. But yeah, well, you just angle it just a little bit. There we go. Yeah, the, ah, <laughs> the producer gets right in there. Ah! <laughs> no, that's awesome. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Here, give me, show me another one. All right. So, uh, and so, yeah. What's the what's the the general idea of this? Back up, back up. Yeah, there we go. Right there, right there. Let me see it. <laughs> no, stop, no, stop moving. <laughs> Good. Oh, look at the background. That's awesome. Now move it a little bit toward uh, toward this Jared. Way. Yeah, right there. Yeah, there then we go. But I'll move it up a little higher, a little more. <laughs> oh, look, look, that's awesome. Stop. Look at the expression. I love your silhouettes in the background. I love the overlapping. Move it just a little closer to me. Awesome. Stop. Now go up. Move up. I'm a director. Can you tell? Other way. Oh, <laughs> uh, look at the shoulders. Great, great arms. I like the shadow behind the faces. That's wonderful. Good job. So much. I like to <laughs> stare hours into the drawings. I still so enjoy it. So Lee's, Lee's going to be riding high for the rest of the day. Yep. Yep. <laughs> you didn't know that you're going to be getting a critique from Mark Kistler today, did you? <laughs> no, right? the, the backgrounds have always fascinated me. I've never, that's not my forte, the backgrounds. And it's just, it's, it's so important to put that back. Just a hint. You just need a little bit. And it adds all that depth. And it adds the scene, the world. It creates a world that you can live in there. So what's Little Guardians about Real quick. Uh, super quick pitch. Uh, it is uh, set in a fantasy setting, so there's swords and monsters to fight, and uh, it's set in a little village. And uh, the protector of the village, uh, uh, when you start in the prologue, um, uh, this is a very special day for him. He's, his son's going to be born. His wife's going into labor. and uh, But there's a threatening demon outside the village, and he has to go take care of it. That's his job. Uh, so he misses the birth of his son, and uh, so that's where you jump in the part of the story. But really, I tell everyone the story is about um, it's about family relationships. It's about uh, the fun <laughs> fighting monster aspect as well. And in this uh, fantasy story that we built and uh, uh, we also deal a lot with gender roles um, about uh, can the can a girl become, you know, grow up to be the fighter and the protector of the village, too. And uh, so our main characters are a little 12 year old girl and 12 year old boy. And uh, they're different, you know, journeys growing up in this village, either being the shopkeeper or the protector of the village. So, and and there's some very very fun characters in this story. The doctor, in particular, is <laughs> is a very he's a very unusual doctor. Oh yeah, he's, crazy yeah. doctor. I love <laughs> perfect character. <laughs> yeah, like it's like he's like a mad scientist who actually does good. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
So yes, that's at littleguardianscomic.com. And we got Eli. What's that, Mark? And you got all you can Twitter me, and I can learn how to. You can Twitter that, and I'll. Oh, yes, yeah, he tweet, he will tweet at me, tweet. What do you call it? tweet? You tweet me, right? That's <laughs> yes, he will tweet you. Don't Twitter you. me. You tweet me. I got it. I'm with you. Twitter's the now. Tweet is the. I'll, then I'll chirp the back. <laughs> me and I'll chirp you. So we have another guest in studio who's also uh, a longtime fan of oh, yeah. Mark Kissler. Oh, his mic's not on, Matt. Uh, we got Eli Nyberger. Of How's it the, going? Of the Hanover District Library. Yes, that's right. It's very nice to meet you, Mark. I'm a huge fan of Secret City from back in the day. Planned my oh, summer hey. days around it. <laughs> and uh, so I brought up a couple books from the collection that have Direction 1 and Direction 7 in plain evidence. Oh, remember so. that? Of course, sure, <laughs> sure. That's those. I, now what I did, those confused uh, uh, kids. And so I, I, I used the same concept, same idea, because it's those positions. You, you guys as artists know, you usually put three-quarter view. Yep. You do something, either left or right, or looking up or looking down. And so those views, I, I just do the compass now. Instead of direction one, I made it direction northeast. Instead of direction, what, seven? I'm trying to remember back there. Seven, <laughs> I made it uh, northwest, uh, and then the five, and it's the same. So it's just those four positions on the compass. If you take the compass, you foreshorten it. Ah. So that's yep. And I, I, you know, I, I always, perhaps because of uh, my formative years, I always uh, believe that I see Secret City and Imagination Station influences in young creators' work, and this is definitely one of them. This is uh, called Artichoke T Tales. It's by Megan Kelso, uh, and it's a very fine line work. I'll hold it up for you here in a second, Mark. Let me get it on the camera for the feed here. But this is just some really nice... Uh, let me see if I can get a good shot there for you. The And it always reminds me very much of the murals from Secret City where there's a lot of stuff going on. There's this very cartoony perspective and things that... Uh, so when I saw this on the shelf, I was like, oh, I got to bring that Can I see upstairs. the cover? Yes. So this is Artichoke this is, Tales. The there, there we go. Artichoke Tales by Megan Kelso. And Megan this is clearly Kelso. a young creator, started out in mini comics and is uh, kind of just riding the boom and now has a Fantagraphics book and doing some great stuff. So that's one thing, Artichoke Kid Tales by Megan Kelso. I also brought one thing that, that I've always, although this is certainly not someone who's influenced by Mark. Oh, uh, sort of Larry Martyr. Larry yeah. Martyr of Bean World. And this is... Uh, there's nothing else quite like Bean World. No, um, it's its own kind of bizarre and un impenetrable mm. story. It's its own ecology, and it's it's really more like Fraggle Rock than anything else. In far as that, there's these different races and how they interrelate to each other. But he does. I mean, this is this is from the late '70s and early '80s, and uh, there's just some really heavy, heavy line work and just it's. It's a narrative style that almost nothing else is like, trying to get it right in the camera there, um, in mm. that it's not exactly a story, but it's it's more kind of like a nature documentary than anything else, and that the story goes in a very unique way. So this is something that I think is kind of underappreciated because it's just so weird and so wonderful and very creative, and it always has made me think of some of the characters from... Uh, from Secret City back in the day, of uh, just how unique the uh, how unique the look was, and how how singular uh, the universe was. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And Larry Martyr is on Twitter. I'm looking him up right now because he also is doing really important work with the comics comic book legal defense fund nowadays. Yep. Uh, so you can follow him at, if I'm not mistaken, it's just Larry Martyr. Those are good. Twitter. The good book. I'm going to check check those out. Of course, I my uh, my all time favorite, Chris Van Alsberg. Uh, the, uh, um, the the Z was zapped and uh, the mystery of Harry Burdock, Chris Van Ellsberg, yep. amazing pencil, amazing pencil artist, Dr. Seuss. I still tell the kids to trace Dr. Seuss. Trace, <gasps> trace, yeah, <laughs> Michelangelo, <laughs> Michelangelo traced, you know, uh, uh, Rembrandt traced, George O'Keefe traced, you know, Mark Kistler traced, <gasps> you know, and uh, <laughs> no. hey, look at this. I got, I got like a hundred tweets here from people. <laughs> this is awesome. Hey, God, we give a shout out to Sally that draws and E. Oh, you know, this is like romper room. And I see Sally, <laughs> and I see there's Eric and Derek and another Eric and Scott and Kurt. Thumbs up. All right, I'm, I'm Twitter guy. That is exactly Twitter. <laughs> that, that is exactly romper room is exactly Twitter. Uh, one, yes. one other book I'd recommend is uh, uh, Ted Arnold. Oh, his, his drawings are fantastic. Have you ever heard of Ted Arnold? He wrote parts. P A R T S. Mm. No, I don't think. so. I want to meet yeah. that guy. He's hilarious. I read. I sent him uh, my one and only fan letter. Okay, I sent one to Chris Van Alsberg too. But I typed him a fan letter to to uh, uh, Ted Arnold. T e d d a r 
Arnold. There, it's there. Figure it out. He's with Scholastic too. So I thought, oh, hey, we're like brothers. We have the same publisher. So I wrote him this long letter. Oh, you're awesome. I'm going to tell a million kids a year about your books. I love them. He wrote parts, then even more parts, and then much more parts, a whole series. And I wrote this, oh, the effusive, effusive letter. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, like three pages, we're brothers, we're scholastic brothers, awesome, we can be buddies, but you know, you know BFF, right? And he sent me a uh, uh, about three months later a note back saying, Thanks, Mark. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> that was it. No, it was awesome. I framed it. It's in my office. And, you know, my kids go, what's that? I go, look, we're brothers, man. He sent me a note. We're, we're communicating. It's awesome. awesome. Hey, thanks for having me on your, your show. That, this yeah, is you got you got to get out of here. You got another class to teach. This man is always on. Uh, you know, Mark Kistler, I have to thank you from the bottom of my heart for making time to be on the show. Uh, thank you for, you know, all the work that you've done, for all the inspiration that you gave, uh, you know, these countless, countless children. Uh, who grew up into big children. <laughs> Lee, Lee, you rock. Thanks for driving four hours. That was awesome. Great to meet yeah, you. Good, good questions. You got a future in broadcast, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mark. It was awesome. All right. Thank so, you guys very much. Yeah, thank, thanks, Mark. Bye, so, guys. Have a great way. Well, I say dream a draw, do it, right? <laughs> 20 or 30 minutes a day, dream a draw, do it. <laughs> Bye, guys. Thanks again. See ya. Bye, Mark. See ya, Mark. Uh, Eli, did you have that one last? Oh, book? I did have one last book. It's just I'm, I'm, I'm caught up in the uh, the podcasting magic that has happened here today. <laughs> this has been really fantastic. So I did want to mention this one other title because this is something really unique because it's not exactly a comic and it's not exactly not a comic either. This is by Michael Kupperman, probably most famous for Snake and Bacon. Uh, and he has a, I brought on the show a couple of months ago, Tales Designed to Thrizzle. Mm -hmm. um, he's a comedy writer, but this is his uh, his comic, Mark Twain's Autobiography, 1910 to 2010. Mm. And it's not exactly a graphic novel, but it, like I said, it isn't exactly not a graphic novel either. Mm -hmm. It has lots of very humorous prose, lots of kind <laughs> of s just set pieces, uh, and then some pretty typical panels in there as well. Interesting, but, and there are some full-on comics. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. this is hilarious. It is so funny. He just is a send-up of all the kind of class, and there's a quote there on the back, Kupperman may have one of the best comedy brains on the planet right now, and that's from Conan O'Brien. So, <laughs> you know, uh, now that, you know, the <laughs> that's somewhat loaded praise, but uh, <laughs> but Michael Kupperman highly recommended all of his stuff I absolutely love. So I just, I grabbed that as well, just because it's such a unique format, so... Cool. Well, thank you, Eli, for always bringing really, really good books to tie into the conversation. Do you have anything else that you want to promote right now at AADL? Uh, well, you know, I think we, we're getting close to the summer game coming back again, and we're uh, really looking forward to Kids Read Comics July 7th and 8th yeah. uh, at, here at AADL. I think, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, exciting stuff. We do have a Mario Kart tournament this weekend, this Friday night. We have a Mario Kart tournament, so that's always uh, doing well. But I think we're just, uh, you know, stuff keeps on happening at the library, and... Uh, you know, given that uh, we know that most of the viewers of this, maybe at any point over the next 500 years, not worrying too much about upcoming events. That uh, well, true. You know, we we're in it for posterity. So, <laughs> but futures <it's>... species, <laughs> think of us. Yeah. Well, it, it's worth documenting too, just to remind people that there is stuff always going on here, always right. going on here. So. Uh, but yes, thank you once again for helping, you know, making the show possible. And yes, I am looking forward to Kids Read Comics as well. I hope we get to see you there, Lee. Mm -hmm. So, Lee, oh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you're still you're still thinking about yes. that critique, aren't you? <laughs> Mark said I was awesome. Commander Mark said I was awesome. Yeah, I won't be coming down until tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but thank you, Lee Lee Sherolis of LittleGuardiansComic.com uh, com and mm -hmm. Lee Sherolis on Twitter. Um, anything else that you've got Lee, that you wanted to yep, make some noise? Lee Sherolis on Google Plus. Lee Sherolis on Facebook. Uh, or Little Guardians on Facebook as well. So, and Little Guardians comic on Twitter. Yeah. Ah, there we go. Oh yeah, yeah, that too. So okay, mm -hmm. uh, and so in Lee, uh, uh, Lee, Eli can be found at Ulotricus yep. on Twitter, and 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 people should check out anybody who's interested in new, in new media. We're going to talk about this in an upcoming episode that you're going to be on. Yep. But uh, you did a great talk in uh, when you, on your trip to Australia. What was that? For, was for a conference? Vala, Vala, the Victorian Association for Library Automation. The talk is called Access Schmaxess, and if you search for Access Schmaxess, you'll find the full talk online there. It's it's a great talk, and anybody who's interested in the future of media, the future of licensing, and also just uh, you know the the future of institutions, I think would get a lot out of it. And it's a fun talk too. I mean, it's just it's just if anybody who watches TED Talks for the fun of it, 
You got one right there. So, uh, I'm not worthy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I meant it when I said it. we were having coffee, and I said like it, it's like Lessig meets Steve Jobs. It's all the entertainment oh, of Steve Jobs, but with the pacing and the information and the passion inspiring uh, kind of rhetoric of a Lessig. So oh, I hope to live up to that. Uh, it's, I, I thought it was that good. Uh, take it from me, folks. So okay, this show will be available at comicsregate.com slash cag52, and it will also be the video podcast you can get at comics.aadl.org, and that's also where you can find all sorts of information about what's going on in the Ann Arbor area in terms of comics events. So uh, thank you, everybody, for downloading and listening and watching. Thanks to Mark Kistler of Draw3D.com and 100Pounds100Cities.com. Thank you, Lee Chirolis of LittleGuardiansComic.com. And thanks to the Ann Arbor District Library for making this possible every two weeks. Until next time, I have been Jersey Drozd of ComicsAreGreat.com and Jersey on Twitter. Okay, bye.